Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 882B, and today's date is February 1st, 2016, and the title of the episode is, Indicators are Flashing Red, Be Prepared for a False Flag Event. Let's get into the economic collapse, political, and geopolitical news. Now, a couple reports ago, I mentioned that the Zika virus originated in Brazil, and that's where Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was experimenting on genetically modified uh, mosquitoes, which was carrying the Zika virus, and it seemed that it spread from that location. Was that a coincidence? It doesn't seem that way. And now we're starting to hear that this Zika virus is spreading further and further into different countries. And the World Health Organization declared the Zika virus a global public health emergency on Monday, following a recommendation by a committee of independent experts. And we could see already they're calling for vaccines. They're coming up with funds to fight this. And this reminds me of every other type of emergency that they declared, like the swine flu, like um, Ebola, everything else, they come up with 4 million, 5 million people are going to be infected. And it seems that they push this out there and they scare a lot of people. And this is part of the agenda so they can work on some type of virus. So they create the disease, they work on the cure, and most likely they will use this later now of course what they'll do is they'll say everyone needs to be vaccinated we see a lot of states right now making this mandatory and this all goes into the pop pockets of the pharmaceutical companies and as we know most of these vaccines have poisons in them chemicals that you would never put into your body and governments are telling you that you need to do this and we'll have to watch how this new crisis plays out now we talked about the pentagon and how a court ruled that they need to release images of tortured afghan iraqi prisoners and they were going to release about what 10 percent or so of the photographs well it seems that right now they delayed the release even though the court said the Pentagon needs to release this, they decided they're not going to at this point. Now, the Pentagon, the government, is not above the rule of law. But it seems that the U.S. government always believes that it's above the rule of law. And the Pentagon did agree to release this under the court order. And now they're backtracking. What don't they want us to see? Because that's really what it's about. Because it's going to show the world. Look at the type of torture that occurs in U.S. prison systems around the world. Now, of course, these prisons are outside of the United States. This is done on purpose because inside the United States, under the Constitution, You just can't bring someone in there, keep them detained without a lawyer. You can't tort. Oh, wait a minute. They did that in Chicago. Oh, I guess it is spreading into the United States because, again, our government does not care about the rule of law. As they continually tell us, everyone needs to follow the rule of law. But it seems that the government feels that it's above the rule of law and everyone else should be following it. Basically, what we're seeing right now is the United States government closing down society. Everyone else must follow these rules, but the people who control everything do not have to. Obamacare, for a good example, everyone needs to get Obamacare, but the government's going to exempt themselves. Well, if it's so good, they should be taking it also. Now, the U.S. right now is going to get about 500 F-35 jets, and they're not going to do any type of combat mission tests. They're just going to take these lemons, because there are so many problems with them, and they're just going to order them, and basically they're a waste of money. Now, if these are the jets that are going to be used 
for combat. When we get into World War III, the United States is in big, big trouble. Now, combat testing takes about a year to evaluate the war, pl the, uh, war plane's performance in simulated fighting scenarios. Now, they took an F-35 and they put it up against an F-16, an older jet, and it lost. The F-35 lost. And we see the software, the Block 3i software, it doesn't work. They can't make it work. They're waiting for updates. And this whole thing seems to be a complete disaster. Compared to uh, Russia's T 55th generation fighter, jet, uh, which was developed by Sukhoi, the F 35 cannot go against this jet. It will lose most likely every single time. And this should scare every single person because our government is pushing us into war. And right now, with China and their weaponry, and Russia with their weaponry, it's, a, it's either equal or advanced to what we have right now. Look what happened to the USS Donald Cook in the Black Sea. Russia flew a jet right over it, knocked out all the electronics. It had to be towed back. Look what's happening in Syria. They were able to place a no-fly zone over Syria. They're able to knock out electronics and bring a plane down. Their S-300, their S-400 missile system, air defense systems, superior to whatever we have. This is not a time that the United States should be pushing war. But guess what? As the economy collapses, as things fall apart, this is their only alternative right now. Now, Ukraine, there's a report out there that Ukraine is mulling the idea of sending in troops into Syria. Now, they're saying that they're going to put together a uh, international uh, coalition and they're going to use Ukrainian troops. We see U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter was visiting Ukraine. And basically what's happening here is the U.S. is getting desperate. They need troops from all different areas. And it seems that this is not really to fight the Islamic State because we know the Islamic State is part of the United States. It's their proxy army. We know what they're getting the coalition for. We know why they need the troop numbers because it's to go against the Syrian army and the Russian army. And right now, the United States doesn't have the authorization for war, so the U.S. cannot bring in the troops to these locations. They can do mission creep where they bring in, you know, three, four, five hundred advisors, which is really combat-ready Marines ready to go. But they can't bring in the 20,000, 30,000 troops that they would really like to. So they have to look to the other nations to say, listen, you bring in 2,000, you bring in 1,500, you bring in 3,000, and this is how they're trying to form an army to fight Russia. And this is what's definitely going to happen. They're going to make it look like they're going in to fight the Islamic State. But what's really happening is they're preparing and getting ready to fight Russia. Now, Kiev is out there saying, well, we're not going to be sending troops to Syria whatsoever. No, no, no. The reports are completely false. And we could tell already, as soon as they come out and say this, you know they're true. Now, out in Libya, we understand that the U.S., and the coalition forces, they have everything prepared and ready to go in Libya. Now, Britain is planning to hit the Islamic State in Libya, which we know is absolutely fake, phony, and false. They're going after the people of Libya, the elected government in Libya. Right now, we see that Britain has sent in a team to draw up a list of targets for the bombing raids. A team of RAF officers and MI6 agents are in Libya right now, along with special op teams from the United States. And all this is in response to the elected government, the parliament in 
Tripoli not allowing the unity government to come in and allowing them to be the puppet government. So they need to get the unity government in Tripoli because the, constitu the constitution of Libya states the government that is in Tripoli is the government. So we can see at this point in time that they are making preparations, they are getting ready, and we are going to see a new invasion of Libya. And I wouldn't be surprised if this happens in the next month or two. This is how close we are to this. Now Turkey is out there continually provoking Russia. And the United States is saying, yes, a Russian plane flew into Turkish airspace and we can confirm that this actually happened. And Mark Wright, defense, uh, from the Department of Defense, said, yes, we can confirm this. And we call on Russia to respect the Turkish airspace and cease activities that risk further heightening instability in the region. And NATO is even out there. And of course, we know Turkey is a NATO nation. And if NATO, I mean, if Turkey gets into war with Russia or something does happen under the NATO rules, all nations will help Turkey. And NATO is saying that they have proof also. They have images of Russian jet violating the Syrian-Turkish uh, border. But we just can't hand over these images because they're top secret. So you're going to have to take our word for it that we have proof. The U.S. is saying they can confirm it. We just can't hand over the proof to you. And what does this tell you? It's all propaganda. That's what this tells everyone. Now Russia is saying we've thoroughly studied in the last 24 hours all objective control data on flights over northern Syria. There were no violations whatsoever. But we do have to remember that Turkey is inside Iraq and Syria without the permission of the governments of Syria and Iraq. But nobody has a problem with this. And Turkey is actually firing into Syria and Russia has proof of all of this. They have video of it, of the locations, exactly when they fired. And if you go to the X-22 report, the video is on the page. You just have to click the link to go over to it. And you can see that, yes, they are doing this. So because of all of this, and because of all the propaganda, Turkey now has put the military on orange alert. What does that mean? Well, which means it's a state of full readiness for anything. Pilots can decide to open fire without the consent of the command. This is very dangerous at this point. Now, you know Turkey is not doing this without the permission of the U.S. government and NATO. What are they doing right now? They're taking this to the next level. They want war. They want Turkey. They want a pilot to fire upon a Russian jet. They want a Russian jet to fire upon a Turkish jet. They really, they really would like the Turkish jet to be knocked out of the sky by Russia. And if this does happen, war is going to start. We are so close right now that everyone should be sitting there going, what in the world is going on here? Russia is going to deploy four of its latest generation 4++ plus plus SU-35 SU fighters in Syria. This whole thing right now is being ramped up. Now, like I just mentioned, Turkey is firing into Syria. Russia has proof. And Major General Igor Konashenkov, in a briefing, said, this is how you present proof. Here's the video. Here's, Turkish, here's Turkey firing into Syria. 
this is, and he's talking to the U.S. and to NATO, this is how you present proof that this is actually happening. Because the U.S. and NATO, they're just using propaganda at this point. I would love to see their proof. Let's see the satellite imagery, because you know the satellites are right above. Let's see the images they have. How can they be top secret? They're out there screaming and yelling that a Russian jet violated Turkish airspace. If this was true, these images would be all over the place. And you know it's not true because they're telling you it's top secret. Britain is saying that the UN brokered peace talks, this is the agenda. Geneva must lead to a political transition away from Assad. The talks in Geneva must lead to one scenario and one scenario only. Assad must step down. That's pretty much it. We see the Syrian peace talks are completely orchestrated to fail. Stephen Lemon is out there and he believes that the White House has not had a change of heart. The same goal is on the table and I agree with him. They want Assad out. This whole thing is a farce. This whole thing is to keep everyone's eyes off of what's really going on and that is the troop buildup, the fortification on the Turkish border to prepare for this major offensive. Right now, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson is going to arrive in Turkey in February to beef up the border with surveillance balloons, anti-tunneling equipment, gear to detect material used in improvised explosive devices. They're going to have uh, Turkish uh, 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 Turkey patrols securing the border with 25,000 troops. They're going to decide to build a concrete wall and fences. Why are they doing this? Well, we know it's not for the Islamic State because they're allowing the Islamic State to move in and out of Turkey. They're housing them. They're treating them. The oil shipments were coming right in. Why would they need all this? The only reason they would need all this is for a major war with Russia and Syria. It's amazing how Department of Homeland Security can go to another country and set up a border which cannot be breached, but they can't be in the United States on our borders to stop the illegals from coming in. Isn't that amazing? They can bring the technology, surveillance balloons. They can spend tons and tons of money out there. But guess what? Here, nothing. So basically what we're seeing is they're preparing for a major war. We see the commander of military operations is saying that we need more U.S. and coalition forces to ramp up fight in Iraq and Syria. Making the call out saying, listen, let's get this authorization for war passed because we need the troops out there. Everything is moving towards war. Now, the Islamic State is announcing they're expanding into the Southeast Asia area. Remember, with this authorization from war, it allows the United States to go to any country that the Islamic State is in. So now what we're going to see is the Islamic State spreading everywhere. Because basically what the United States is doing is declaring war on the world <laughs> in every single country. But to get this war kicked off, they're trying many different things. They're trying the false flag in Syria, Turkey with Russia. They're using the peace talks to keep everyone's eyes off of what's really going on. They're using the Islamic State to put out messages that they'll be attacking London, that they'll be attacking the U.S. Basically, the latest message from the Islamic State says it will focus its European terrorist operations on London, threatening to launch an attack on the British capital so terrible it will turn children's hair white. Now, like I said, the next event that we're going to see has to be 
horrific. It has to be big. It has to be in multiple locations. And it has to consist of not just men running around shooting, pretending to shoot people. It has to be some type of chemical, biological. It has to be a big explosion. It has to be some type of cyber attack along with the physical attack because the cyber attack, you can't really feel it. It doesn't scare you. So they need a physical attack coupled with a cyber attack of some sorts. We see that the FBI, we mentioned this before, is preparing for the Super Bowl. They have many drills going on. They're continually training, drilling for what is coming. They're going to be joined by Homeland Security, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, local law enforcement. So far, there's no credible threats. But this is what they're worried about. A lone wolf terrorist attack, air poisoning by drone, a disruption of the civilian communication system via fiber optic cables, which would be cut. So this is a very big event. A lot of people there. A lot of people have their phones. A lot of cameras. They've been drilling for this. Is this a good area to have a false flag event? Well, it is televised. But I think it would be very hard to pull this off. Not saying it would be impossible. But to have all these people in the stadium with cameras, it would be very difficult. It would be easier to have it maybe somewhere outside of the Super Bowl in one of the surrounding areas around outside of the stadium. Now, this doesn't mean there's not going to be some type of false flag. Because if they're going to do it, they would have to do it really big. They would have to kind of explode the entire stadium. They'd have to make, they would have to create so much chaos that people would just be running. That no one would want to film anything. They would have to shut down the communication system. So we need to watch all of this because what we're getting is indicators that the U.S., the coalition forces, they are preparing to start this war one way or another. And they're going to create an event like we've never seen before. And we all need to be prepared for it. We need to, under we need to understand that it is coming. We need to understand that it's going to happen in multiple places, not just one. And it's something we need to be aware of. So we need all eyes looking everywhere. We need to make sure we understand that it could hit anywhere. And we all need to be ready for what is coming because they're getting ready to bring us to war. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.